Hi guys, Dr. Hampton here. Welcome to my channel. Today I want to spend some time with a, a good new friend as Miriam Kalamian, who is a nutrition consultant, educator, and author. And she is very much into this idea of using the keto diet to help uh, us survive cancer and or delay its progression. And there's so many uh, myths about cancer that um, we need to learn about. And her great book, Keto for Cancer, is a place you can learn a lot. And she shares an inspiring story about her son and, and the things that they had to face as they went through that mm -hmm. journey. So, But today we want to talk about some of the myths that are around keto and cancer. And I think we're going to start our conversation by this myth about hair loss. So Miriam, won't you do me a favor and talk a little bit about the first myth with this is that keto can cause hair loss. Well, I actually do think that keto can cause some hair loss. I think what can happen when you make a sudden shift in your diet from maybe eating a lot of grains and starches and maybe even sugars, all of a sudden on the body, they're like, whoa, 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 what are we supposed to be doing right here? Let's shut down anything that's not really necessary. And it's not really necessary for us to grow hair. So there's a shift in hormones too. So there's a lot of signaling changes going on. But that said, I have had clients tell me that their hairdresser has said, oh, you know, keto, keto, that's why you have the hair loss. And these same people are also undergoing chemotherapy. And we mm -hmm. all know that chemotherapy is associated with hair loss. So it's not the worst thing that can happen if you shed a little bit of hair from keto. And it's not the worst thing that can happen if you shed a lot of hair with, uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, with chemotherapy. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I agree with you. Whenever I uh, see patients and before I refer them to the dermatologist uh, for their hair loss or alopecia, the first question I ask them is what's changed and are you under a lot of stress? And obviously, when you make a dietary change, there's some stress. Mm -hmm. So so I, so I like uh, where you're going with this. It's like, of course, a change can cause some hair loss, but but the longer term benefits of using this diet are probably going to outweigh that. So I'm right there with you. So let's go with the second thing you hear. And that's this idea that keto will destroy your immune system. What do you think about that? Again, if you looking at, I'm coming from keto for cancer. And the primary thing that's destroying the uh, immune system is the chemotherapy. So uh, the, the thought that, uh, that keto is having a significant impact on white blood cells or even red blood cells, not keto done right. That's not the prime driver here. So keto done right, uh, well-formulated ketogenic diet, as they would call it in my world, uh, that is, is not, it's not a contributor here. To, you know, there are some data around fasting and the reduction in white blood cell counts. But if you look at uh, like the work of Walter Longo uh, with fasting, uh, you see that it's a, it's a smaller population of white blood cells after the fast, but it's a healthier population of white blood cells. So just because your white blood cell counts are high, it doesn't mean that they're healthy. And I love what you said. You said well-formulated keto diet, right? And what we've learned, and I'm sure you've learned as much as I, if you need to, when you see a study, you need to make sure it's a keto study, right? So many of the make studies, it's a human study. Right. Good point. So, and so many studies are on mice and things like that. So, so anybody listening, I know you, this is when you use your clinician to help guide you. If they are very good at reading studies, they'll let you know, is this study even worthy of looking at? But if it's not a real keto diet, then it means nothing in, in terms of how we see the world. It's got to be the real thing. And, and, and sometimes you got to get down to 5% of your uh, intake in terms of macronutrients are carbs uh, in order for it to even qualify for uh, therapeutic keto. So it just depends mm -hmm. on what kind of keto. But if it's like 30 or 40%, that's probably not going to qualify in terms no, of the carbs. it's not a keto diet. And nope. that's what a lot of the studies are saying. So that's why we have trouble. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about another thing. As a primary care doctor, I deal with patients who are dealing with gout. Uh, and a lot of people are like, I can't do keto because I'm going to get gout. So what's your thoughts about, is, is that a myth that you can get uh, gout with keto? Or is that a kind of a maybe? I, you know, it's not a myth. Because what you see, at least in the first few months of a keto diet, you can see a rise in uric acid levels. 
Uh, and uh, Bullock and Finney wrote about that in their book, uh, the uh, let's see, the Art and Science of Low Carb Living. Okay, that was the name of it. Uh, and uh, so you have this rise in in uric acid because it's competing with ketones for excretion. Right. So after uh, the adjustment period to keto, generally the uric acid levels go back down. But there's another, there's a doctor, Deep Dixit, and he did a study where he actually, uh, uh, you know, intended to create the problem, to, to create these crystals that, uh, that we associate with gout. In I think it was a rat model. I don't think it was a mouse. I think it was a rat. And uh, he saw that beta hydroxybutyrate, which is one of the ketone molecules, actually suppress that uh, that inflammation associated with that. Very significant study, even though it wasn't a rat. Right. Uh, so uh, if somebody has a history of gout, I think you do have to proceed pretty carefully so that they maybe a slower introduction so you don't have that uh, steep rise in uric acid in the beginning. But my clients that don't start with gout are not developing gout. Yeah, that's been my clinical experience. And I agree that if I have a patient who has a history of gout or the uric acid levels are high, I just ease them into yeah. keto. But at the end of the day, and your body does adapt and eventually, uh, and that's one of the reasons why for those who uh, check ketones where you may see a leveling off when you start using those. When your body learns how to use ketones as fuel, it'll level off and, and then the uric acid will be able to be excreted with less of a problem. So I'm seeing the same thing you're seeing, but I think it's important that we raise that because we want to remove the barriers because there may be some people listening. I really want to do keto for cancer, but I'm afraid of all of these things. And so let's talk about the last thing we want to talk about, and that's that cancer gobbles up fat. And I've heard people talk about that. Uh, so does cancer uh, um, uh, gobble up uh, you know, fat or does keto gobble up fat? What's going on with this whole connection with fat? Yeah. Uh, you know, in the beginning, there was uh, one set of objections to keto for cancer. And now it's sort of morphing into this idea that maybe the cancer cells are able to use the fats. Well, what are they using them for? Uh, when I talk to Dr. Seyfried about this, this that I'm hearing and, you know, in his review of the research, he says, well, what's happening really is that, uh, that lipids can be taken up, but they're stored as lipid droplets in the cell. Mm -hmm. So they're not really effectively, efficiently used as an energy metabolite for the cell. Mm -hmm. So we do know that cancer cells will use an awful lot of glucose. Mm -hmm. And it's not just, a, and I, and I want to make a point of this because I think this is really important. Again, back a decade ago, it was very simple. Uh, uh, you know, cancer uses glucose, loves sugar, thrives on sugar. So a ketogenic diet is going to prevent that. Well, it's going to lower the availability, but the cell is still going to be able to access glucose. Mm -hmm. It still happens. There's more insulin receptors on cancer cells. There's more um, uh, glucose transporters on insulin cells. So it's going to get in there. And what the cell is doing with, to it, with it, in addition to uh, using it for energy, in the cytoplasm of the cell, it's, um, it's fermenting that glucose into lactic acid. Yeah. Lactic acid is then accumulating in the cell. Some of it is converted to some of these bits and pieces of things. They call it biomass that's going to uh, be used by the cell in order to build the structures it needs. It needs cell membranes. So it's going to use some lipids for that, but it's going to make its own lipids as well. Right. And it's going to use some protein. It's going, to, it's going to use protein building blocks to build like microtubules for the structural components. So you have all this going on. And uh, so it's not just about its ability to use it for energy. So you have biomass synthesis, creating all these little building blocks for cell proliferation. And by far, that is happening much more with glucose than it is with fats or with proteins or even with ketones. All of them are going to contribute some to that, That's right. um, but they're not going to be the main contributor. The main contributor is still gl glucose in the cytoplasm of the cell right. and glutamine in the mitochondria of the cell. That Absolutely. kind of process is parallel in the mitochondria. That's what I'm talking about. So what I'm hearing is that 
cancer prefers glucose as an energy source, and it, maybe it can use fat, but that's not its preferred energy source. It's, it's my, maybe your energy source and my energy source, but it's definitely not cancer, so I appreciate that. So, so this is exactly what I wanted to do, pro- provide some perspective, touch on a couple of areas. In fact, when I we both presented at Low Carb USA, and uh, it was a great time. I had a chance to meet yes. you in person, great. and I did talk about the mitochondria, and I talked about you know, uh, you know the Warburg effect, which we'll probably touch on when we get to uh, the podcast. And 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 I just think it's important we understand so biochemistry. And one of the things I like about biochemistry, it proves all this wonderful uh, stuff that we're trying to do as we help people uh, improve their life through nutrition. So thank you, Miriam, for being with me today on my channel. For those who are my listening, pleasure. this is uh, my guest for podcast episode number sixty-two. And we entitled it Keto uh, for Cancer. So we're, we're going to talk a little bit about that, learn a little bit more about uh, her son's journey and what that was like. And uh, and I think you'll benefit from checking it out. And I'll make sure I have a link in the show notes. So, so I appreciate you guys for checking out the channel. And until we have another video, be safe, be well, and continue to protect your nest. <laughs>